Hi everyone, Selassie here. So we're still on this um, shoulder dart bust here with a deep plunging neckline. In my previous tutorial, I showed you how to interface your fabric, how to cut your fabric, how to draft the pattern for the bust pad, how to attach the laminated foam, and also how to join the front pieces together. Okay, so in this video, I'll be focusing more on the neckline how to attach the regilin boning and insert your neckline wire and then just you know generally join the old pieces together for this top so because i was in a rush i could not video the sewing process for the yellow blouse so just because you guys were requesting i had to recreate this using another fabric okay now i have my two center front pieces together including the lining you're going to join both of them together now because the neckline is the most challenging part to sew when it comes to this top i'm going to be using a calico to demonstrate how to sew the neckline so here is a calico i'm going to start by joining the two center front pieces together like so and then repeat the same for the lining okay so the same allowance i added to the neckline is half of an inch so i'm going to start sewing from the waistline to the neckline depths so make sure you end at that exact point on the lining as well um, next you want to flip it open like so and with right side facing right side place the lining onto your main fabric now to sew the left hand side of the neckline flip all the seam allowance toward the right hand side and pin it in place Remember guys, we still need to add the side front to the center front pieces. So for this reason, come down two inches from the top of the neckline and start marking your seam allowance of half of an inch from this point until you get to the neckline depth, okay? So coming down two inches from the top of the neckline will make it easy for you when it's time to attach the side front to the center front piece. So now remove the right hand side from the way and then you want to start sewing from this point until you get to the neckline depth point. Now we're going to repeat the same process for the right hand side. Flip all the seam allowance toward the left hand side and pin it in place. And then you're going to remove the left hand side from the way. And now you need to start sewing two inches from the top of the neckline to this point here. So just to be able to access the neckline depth point easily, I switched from my regular presser foot to my zipper presser foot. So I'm going to start sewing the neckline like so. Now you want to drop your needle right on that um, neckline depth point. Carefully do a back stitch and then sew the neckline to this point. Now you're going to flip the seam allowance of the neckline toward the lining and do a top stitch. When doing the top stitch, come down one inch from where you started sewing the neckline and start your top stitch from that point. And then you're going to end it here, okay? Now you're going to repeat the same process for the other side. Now you want to open the seam allowance like so and carefully give it a good press, okay? Now this seam allowance is what is going to be the boning channel for the regilin boning as well as for the neckline wire. So you would need a quarter inch wide regilin boning which you're going to insert and sew to one side of the seam allowance. So I'll be showing you how to do this later on. So now I've given it a good press and this is what it looks like. And now I've gone ahead to repeat the same process for my main fabric. Next, you wanna bring in your side front piece and join it to the center front piece. And you should have something like this. Now you want to repeat the same process for the lining. I'm going to bring in the side front and attach it to the lining and repeat the entire process of pressing and molding. 
Now you're going to bring in your back pattern and attach it to the shoulder seam and also attach it to the side seam, lining to lining, fabric to fabric. Now that we've joined the pieces together, you should have something like this. So next you want to go back in and press the shoulder seam open and also press the side seam open for both the lining and the fashion fabric. Now you can go ahead and sew your red jelly bone into that princess seam line. So you want to sew the red jelly bone in on both ends of the seam allowance, starting from the underboss to the waist. Now I've gone ahead to tuck in my already made bra cup, which I got from an old bra. So I tuck here onto the seam allowance. I tuck it here. I also tuck it on the underboss just by that seam allowance. I tuck here and also tuck right on this point here. So all together I tuck on five different places. Okay. Moving on, you want to pin the fashion fabric and the lining together at the neckline like so. So when you get to this point on the front neckline, push that seam allowance toward the center front and pin it in place like so. Now take this to your sewing machine. You want to start sewing from the center back all the way to the front neckline. So after we're done sewing the neckline, we need to go back in and do a top stitch, okay? Once you get to this point, while your needle is the inside the fabric, you want to carefully raise the presser foot and then rotate the fabric like so, and then continue to sew. Now, once you're done sewing, you want to notch this point on the neckline, but for the sake of clarity, I'm going to switch to my calico just to throw more light on how to sew the neckline. Now, after joining the fashion fabric and the lining together on the neckline, this point right here, you have to notch. If not, when you turn this to the right side, you're going to see that the neckline is not relaxed. There's a bit of tension right on this point. So for that reason, you need to notch this point. So when you're notching this point, be careful so you don't cut through the thread. Okay. So just carefully notch this slowly, making sure it is close to the thread, but not through the thread. And I also went ahead to notch like half of an inch above that point because I saw some tension at that point as well. So now I'm going to turn this to the right side so we'll see what we have. From what I can see, there's just a tiny bit of tension still there. So I'm going to turn it back to the wrong side and just um, notch toward the direction of where I'm seeing the tension. Next, we're going to do a top stitch on the neckline. Remember, we've already done the front neckline halfway. Do take note that at this point, you must have joined the back of the bodies to the front of the bodies. Okay, so I'm just using this to illustrate. So now turn all the seam allowance toward the lining and do a top stitch all the way to the front neckline. Now, after the top stitch, I'm going to turn it to the wrong side. So I'm going to first of all trim down this seam allowance. Now you can trim from this point all the way to the back neckline. Just trim it down to like a um, quarter of an inch. And then on the front neckline, you want to release this seam allowance. Turn it to the other side and release the seam allowance there as well. So now I'm going to trim down this seam allowance. Now this seam allowance on the front neckline is going to be the boning channel for both the regulin boning and the neckline wire. Now take your regulin boning, the left hand side of the regulin boning should rest right on this seam, okay, right in the middle. The right hand side you're going to stitch to the seam allowance, okay. Let the seam right in the middle of the seam allowance be your guide for the left hand side of the regulin boning. The right hand side of the regulin boning, you're going to stitch all the way to the waistline. Having done this, I'm going to go ahead and trim down both ends of the regulin boning. 
Now you're going to take the seam allowance and close it all the way to the waistline. Okay, so make sure that when you're closing this, you want the space in between to be nothing less than quarter of an inch to three eighths of an inch. Okay, so after sewing, this is what I have. So you have like double line on this side of the front of the neckline while you have single line on the side. Okay. You're going to take this to your table and give it a good press. Once that is done, you can now take your neckline wire and carefully slip it into the boning channel all the way to the neckline point. Now I'm going to use my zipper foot to do the top stitch on the neckline. You want to stitch all the way from this point down to the neckline point just immediately after the neckline wire and then you can take it all the way to the other side sort of like you want to form a V neckline or you can sew it from this point of the neckline all the way to the waistline. If you go for this method then you have to do a stitch in the ditch right in the middle of that center front seam. Now the second way you can create the boning channel is to simply just close the seam allowance on the neckline. Okay, so first of all, after sewing the neckline and doing a top stitch, you want to close the seam allowance like so, making sure the space in between is a little bit wider than quarter of an inch. Okay, so you want your regin limb boning to be able to go through. Once that is done, you want to carefully slip in the regin limb boning and then slip in the neckline wire. Once you've done that, you can now go ahead and do a top stitch on the neckline all the way to the waistline. Remember, once if you are going for the one that is all the way to the waistline, you need to block that center front seam by doing a stitch in the ditch. So this will prevent the neckline wire from slipping down. So I went with the first method of um, attaching the regiline bone into the neckline. And I have also gone in to um, insert the neckline wire. So now I'll go ahead and do the top stitch all the way to the waistline and do the stitch in the ditch right on the center front seam. And this is what I have. Now, before joining the bottom panel to the blouse, first of all, you want to baste the waistline of the blouse together with the lining, um, or you want to pin it in place first, okay, just to hold it together. Now, for the bottom panel, I interfaced it before I line it, okay? So now, you bring in your blouse that you've based the waistline, fold the bottom panel together and notch it on the center front, now with right side facing right side, you want to first of all pin it at the center front and then pin it all the way to the center back. Once this is done, you can take it to your sewing machine and sew. If you have an overlocker, you can finish the center back seam and then go in to fix your zipper. Um, after fixing your zipper, you can um, baste the ammo together with the lining before you fix your sleeve. Just in case you have any question, you can leave it on the comment section. Um, this brings us to the end of this video. I hope you find this video helpful. If you do, remember to leave a comment, like this video and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you on my next one.